Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is introduce you to how we go about solving quadratic inequalities. They're handled totally differently from doing linear inequalities. So first of all what do we mean by a quadratic inequality? Well it's anything that takes on the form, say, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. And for it to be an inequality, it's got to be, say, greater than zero or less than zero, maybe greater than or equal to zero, or less than or equal to zero. Now, I've got two examples up here, which I'm going to run through. Both of these reflect different points which we'll go through. Now for the first one here we've got to solve 2x squared minus x is less than 3. And for this one you can see it's not in this form. It hasn't got the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So I've got to remove the 3 here from this side, the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So if I do that we're therefore going to have 2x squared minus x minus 3 is less than 0. So I've now got this in basically this form, ax squared plus bx plus c is less than 0. And the next thing we do is we factorise this. I'm assuming it factorises. If not, I'll tell you how we can go about this in a line or two later. But assuming it factorises, this one does. We've got a couple of brackets here. OK, we'll put less than 0 on the end. So we've got 2x and we've got x. That will give us the 2x squared. And then two numbers that multiply together to give minus 3. Well, that's going to be minus 3 and plus 1. And if you put them in these two positions, you can see you've got 2x here minus 3x. 2x minus 3x gives you the minus x. So assuming it factorises, what we do next, and even if it doesn't factorise, I say what we do next is we work out something called the critical value. So I'm going to put down here therefore for the critical values and I would strongly encourage you to write this step in when you're doing this. Now when it comes to critical values, it means what is the values of x when this equals 0? Now I said to you, if it doesn't factorise, all we've got to do is just use the quadratic formula and it would tell us the values of x that would make it equal to 0 and they would be called the critical values. But because this factorises, I can just say that either this factor, which is 2x minus 3, that factor would equal 0, or the other factor, x plus 1, would equal 0. Notice how I'm writing equals 0, not less than 0. It's very important that you do that. Now if we solve this for x by adding 3 to both sides, 2x would equal 3. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I end up with x equals 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. And if I subtract 1 from both sides here, the other critical value is x equals minus 1. Now you might remember these as being called the roots of the equation. If this were an equation, it would be 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. And I could get these values quite easily then by using the quadratic formula if it didn't factorise. Or even if it did factorise, I could still use the quadratic formula. Now the next step is to draw a sketch graph. And this graph that we're going to draw here is the graph of the equation here, 2x squared minus x minus 3. So y equals 2x squared minus x minus 3. Or you could have the factorised version of this, which as we've seen is 2x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1. It doesn't matter which one of these two we have. It's going to be the same graph anyway. So when it comes to sketching this graph, let's just set up our axes. We've got a y-axis here and we'll have the x-axis. Okay. Now, 
When y is equal to zero, in other, in other words, when 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals zero, or 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals zero, we've seen that the solutions are x equals 3 over 2, 1 and a half, or x equals minus 1. And this would be where the curve would cross the x-axis. That's when y is zero. So what I'll do is I'll mark those points in. This is minus 1. And this point over here is 3 over 2, 1 and a half. It's not drawn to scale, but that doesn't really matter here for this type of work. And this is a positive x squared graph, so it's going to be u-shaped. So we're going to have our curve looking something like this, coming down like so and back up. It's more biased towards the right-hand side, so the lowest point is going to be to the right-hand side of the y-axis. So it's worth bearing that in mind, not that that's going to really change the result here. Now, what we do is for this question, we're looking at where y, y being 2x squared minus x minus 3, or 2x minus 3 times x plus 1, is less than 0. And that means that we're looking for y values that are below the x-axis. And those y values range between minus 1 and 3 over 2. We're looking for values in this region below the x-axis. So they're going to span that section there. Okay? And that is our set of answers. So from the graph we can see that therefore x lies between, and we write a lies between like this, okay? It lies between minus 1 and 1.5 and or 3 over 2. So that's our solution set. Take any value of x in this range here and it will satisfy this inequality. You can check it out if you like with say x equals 1. If you were to square 1, that's 1, times it by 2, you got 2. 2 minus 1 leaves you with 1 and you can clearly see that's less than 3. And you could check it out yourself for some other values here. Okay, well I've got this example here and you'll notice that with this one I've got the negative x squared. It's not, say, in this format as such. Now I'm going to show you how to do this one two ways. In fact, you might even want to pause the video at this stage and have a go at this one yourself. So I'll just give you a moment to do that. And when you come back, we'll run through it. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So I said there was two ways of doing this, and I'll run through both ways. The first thing I notice about this is it's negative x squared. And I don't want to work with negative x squared. You can if you want to, but uh, I'm not going to work with negative x squared. I'm going to multiply both sides of my inequality by minus 1. So if I take this term here, it's going to become x squared. So we're therefore going to have x squared. I'll take the x term next, multiply minus 3x by minus 1, and you're going to get plus 3x. And if I now multiply the 10 by minus 1, we've got minus 10. But you have to be careful now, because if I multiply the 0 by minus 1, OK, I get 0, but I'm multiplying both sides of my inequality by negative 1. And that means we must reverse the inequality if you multiply or divide by a negative number. OK, so that's the tricky bit there. Do remember that. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is factorize it assuming it factorizes, and this one does, so uh, we'll put our two brackets there, greater than or equal to zero. And we've got an x and an x to give us x squared, and I notice that if we pick a plus 5 and a minus 2, they multiply together to give minus 10, and I notice that 5x minus 2x gives us the 3x. Next we need to work out what the critical values are. So do write this in, therefore, for critical values, or maybe even just critical values as a subtitle. But at least use that word, critical values. And so that would be where x plus 5 
okay, would equal 0, so I put x plus 5 equals 0, or the other factor, x minus 2 equals 0. And solving this, subtracting 5 from both sides, we therefore have x equals minus 5. Or for this one, adding 2 to both sides, x equals 2. Don't forget, you could use the quadratic formula if you wanted to, to solve the equation to get the critical values. Now that I've got the critical values, I've got to sketch the graph of y equals x squared plus 3x minus 10. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. Or exactly the same graph can be the factorised version. x plus 5, x minus 2. Again, it's the same graph. It's not going to make any difference. So putting on those axes, let's just have our y-axis and the x-axis. Mark on the critical values. They're at minus 5. That's when y is 0 and when x equals 2. So the curve is u-shaped because you've got a positive x squared there. More biased to the left of the y-axis. So you're going to get a curve looking something like this. Okay. Again, not drawn very accurately there. In fact, pretty terrible really. Let's just take part of that out and try again. Okay, a little bit better I hope there. What do we want though this time? Well, we're told that x squared plus 3x minus 10, y in other words, has got to be greater than or equal to 0. So in other words, y's got to be above the x-axis. And I can see that it's above the x-axis for this stretch of the curve. That is for values of x more than 2. So we want that section out there. And also, it's above the x-axis for values of x that are less than minus 5. Now I say less than minus 5 and more than 2, but really for this example, because we can actually have 0, it's greater than or equal to 0, we get 0 when x is 2 and when x is minus 5. So for this particular solution, we lay it out differently to this one here. Because what we've got here is two separate sets compared to the one set here, the one shading, if you like. So what we do is we say x, and if we're looking at this shading here, x is less than or equal to, in this example, minus 5. And it's or rather than and. Or x is greater than or equal to 2. So we have two solution sets there. Now I did say that there's two ways that we could do this particular problem. So I'll show you the other way that we could go about it. So if we take the inequality again, 10 minus 3x minus x squared, which is less than or equal to 0, suppose we keep it in this format. Then factorising this, we therefore have the two brackets and it's less than or equal to 0. And at the front here, two numbers that multiply together to give 10, well that would be a 5 and a 2. And at the rear here, we need two values that multiply together to give minus x squared. Well it's going to be plus x and minus x. And it's in that order because I can see that I get 5 times minus x, which is minus 5x, and x times 2, which is plus 2x. Minus 5x plus 2x is the minus 3x. So I've factorised this, and now I can find the critical value. So again, we'll put the intro here for critical values. So do write that in. And for those critical values, each of these factors would equal 0. So therefore, we would have 5 plus x equals 0, or the other factor, 2 minus x, would equal 0. And solving for x here, subtracting 5 from both sides, gives us x is minus 5. Or the other critical value, if we add x to both sides, we get 2 equals x, or essentially x equals 2. So same critical values as we had before. 
But when it comes to sketching the graph, let's see what happens. Okay, have our axes, same as before. We've got our critical values, minus 5 and 2. We draw the curve, but this time, remember we're drawing the graph of y equals 10 minus 3x minus x squared, which factorizes to 5 plus x multiplied by 2 minus x. But this time, when it comes to sketching the graph, we've got a negative x squared, which means that the curve, being parabolic, isn't a U shape, but it's the other way up. So we've got, we're going to get a curve coming up through the minus 5 to the left-hand side of the y-axis, dropping back down through the 2. Okay, something like that. Now we're looking for where y is less than or equal to 0. And that means that we're looking for values of y which are below the x-axis. So you can see we're looking at this region here. In other words, values that are greater than 2 and also values below the x-axis which occur this way for values of x less than minus 5. So we're going to arrive at exactly the same answer. Remember though we have got that it can equal 0 so therefore we can have values of x which are less than or equal to minus 5 or values of x which are greater than or equal to 2. So hopefully this has given you an idea now how we can go about solving quadratic inequalities. Just make sure you rearrange them if they're not greater than or less than zero. Rearrange them into the correct form. Factorize them so that you can go on to find the critical values. If they don't factorize, you can use the quadratic formula. Draw your sketch graph. And then from the sketch graph, you should be able to see which particular set of values that you need. Okay?